Hey friends, and welcome in to A Walk Through the Word, Daily Bread with Crystal Fry. I am your host, Crystal Fry, and today we are continuing our 30-day journey through the book of Ephesians. In this episode, we're finishing up chapter 4 with verses 28 through 32 and picking up where we left off yesterday and learning how we are expected to put off our old self and put on the new self. Thank you for being here with me today, and I pray that you will listen with an open heart to hear the Word of God speaking to you. All right, friends, let's dive in. God's Word is powerful. The missing link is our identity in Christ. When we know who we are and who He created us to be, that is when we can truly walk in freedom. You are never alone. There is hope, and that hope is Jesus Christ. In today's episode, our focus is on chapter 4, verses 28 through 32, which read, He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. In yesterday's episode, we talked about two of the five specific ways Paul instructs us to put off our old self and put on the new self. Today, we're going to look at the remaining three to close out chapter four. In verse 28, Paul essentially gives us another bottom line item. Don't steal, do honest work. But this is more than just honest work to provide for your basic necessities. This is work that generates an overflow to help others in need. We should be generous with what we have in order to help others. Whether you have an overflow of time, money, or talent, Hebrews 13, 16 says, And do not forget to do good and share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Again, we are being reminded here to turn away from our old ways of selfishness and self-centeredness, and instead focus our lives on the giving and generous ways of Christ. Verse 29 addresses that garbage out that we talked about in yesterday's episode. Paul tells us not to let any unwholesome talk come out of our mouths. Now, this is not just referring to the words and the language that we use, but our subject matter as well. Slander, gossip, assumptions without evidence, hurtful words, all of these qualify as unwholesome. Instead, Paul tells us to speak only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. This not only includes encouragement, motivation, and inspiration, but also correction, discipline, and speaking the truth in love to one another. The words that come out of your mouth should build people up and help them, not tear people down and demoralize them. Let me interject just a little side note here and remind you that this also applies to the words you say to and about yourself. My friend, you should not be speaking to yourself in ways that you would not speak to others. I know there are many people who struggle with this in particular, negative self-talk. 
I struggled horribly with it for many years and still have to catch myself every so often and course correct how I am speaking to myself. So I want to offer you a little challenge here before we move on to the third behavior that we're going to cover today. I'd like to challenge you to try to speak to yourself and others in the way that you would speak if Jesus was physically standing right next to you. Think about how that would change the words that come out of your mouth. The last behavior Paul tells us to put off as part of our old self is grieving the Holy Spirit. But what does that mean exactly? Well, to grieve means to cause pain or distress, sadness, or sorrow. Essentially, we grieve the Holy Spirit when our words and actions are not in alignment with how we are called to live as followers of Christ, and we do not seek to rectify that situation. In verse 31, Paul tells us to get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice, because these things do indeed grieve the Holy Spirit. These things are rooted in the enemy, and he will continue to look for ways to plant seeds of doubt, fear, hatred, and bitterness in the hearts and minds of God's people. Instead, verse 32 tells us that we are to be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave us. This verse speaks volumes about how we are to live as Christians. Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price for our salvation, taking on not only your sins and mine, but all the sins of all people, past, present, and future. What Jesus did for you and me more than 2,000 years ago is something that we aren't able to actually fully comprehend and understand the magnitude of. The Word of God became flesh, lived among us, and committed no sin, yet was subjected to persecution, ridicule, suffering, betrayal, and finally, a horrid and gruesome death nailed to a cross so that you and I wouldn't have to spend eternity separated from God. So I want you to remember that the next time that you're tempted to hold a grudge over something trivial that doesn't even matter in the long run, we have received the gift of forgiveness and we expect that God will continue to forgive us. Shouldn't we extend that same forgiveness to others? Thank you, friend, for being here with me today, and I hope you'll join me tomorrow as we continue our 30-day journey through Ephesians. If you're looking for a more in-depth resource to help you study the book of Ephesians, either alone or with a group, check out my new book, A Walk Through the Word, Unpacking and Applying the Book of Ephesians, now available on Amazon. And I'll drop the link in the notes below so that you can go and check it out. In our next episode... We're getting started in chapter 5 with verses 1 through 4 and what it means to be imitators of God. Until then. Hey friend, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. It's my pleasure as always to be here with you. If what you listened to today resonated with you, if you enjoyed listening to the show, do me a favor, go ahead and like and subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. Those reviews are so helpful. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate each and every single one of them. And go ahead and share this episode out with a friend. Invite them along for a walk through the word and let's enjoy that daily bread together. See you tomorrow.